Okay, I just received a message from the Intergalactic Confederacy of Planetary Com Commandeers of Peace. <laughs> they always have to have really long, fancy names. Yeah? <laughs> Titles, I mean. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. <laughs> okay, now. When the reservations were first set up, the Indians were forced on there. And in the beginning, reservations were like prison camps. You couldn't leave, and we were not allowed to hunt for foods that we're used to. So we only were allowed to eat government food, which was very unhealthy. And it resulted in Indians all over America getting diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, and obesity because we couldn't leave. And then our spirituality and our language were declared illegal on April 10th, 1883. So we were hit physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And then we became weak-minded. The self has four parts, the body, the emotional self, the soul, and the mind. And we were hit in three of those at the same time. Physically, Spiritually and emotionally, we were hit at the same time. So the fourth part is the mind. So since we were hit in three of the four parts severely, we became weak-minded. And this is the same condition that cult leaders and terrorists bring to their new recruits. They deprive them of things they need, and eventually they become weak-minded, and then they control them. That's what happened to us on the reservation. We were deprived of healthy food. We were deprived of our ceremonies. We were deprived of our language. And in a little while, we became weak-minded. And the Christian and Catholic priests took advantage of that, and they outlawed a lot of things. And so what they really did was they just took a tiny remnant of our way, and then they Christianized or Catholicized it. And then they said to us that this is the Lakota way. So we began to believe what the priests were saying. And as a result, the Lakota people lost a lot of ancient information. But some of us still have it. Just very few of us. And this ancient information conflicts with the Bible. So that's why most Lakota people of today will not believe what I talk about because they're looking through Christian eyes. And if they're not Christian, they're Christian influenced. A good example is the word Wakantanka. In the ancient belief system, Wakantanka is several organizations. They have the same name. But each organization does things differently. The reason is the same, but they just do things differently. That's why there's several organizations with this name. And each one is an organization. It's a group. The Christians and Catholics change that to mean the one Christian God, the Catholic God. So they changed the Wakantanka definition to mean one person. So today, if you ask people on the reservation, what is Wakantanka? 99% of the time, the answer you're going to get is it's the great almighty, the creator, the great mystery. And the only one that's closest to being true is the great mystery because it's hard to understand. But it's not a one God concept. In Lakota star knowledge stories, there is no heaven, there is no hell, and there is no God, and there is no Satan. Those two expressions are duality. Duality is when you look at life and you divide everything into two. And the part that you like, you say that's good. And the other part, you say that's bad. Then, in duality, it creates statements like, if you're not with me, then you're against me. See, the Bible, Jesus says that. That shows you the, the Christianity is duality. And if you don't agree with me, then I must destroy you. 
That's all coming from duality. The Lakota way is not like that. The Lakota way is based on reality beginning within. And sometimes in life, there's difficulty. But when you make the best of it and learn from it, it transforms into blessing because you receive wisdom and knowledge. And that nurtures inner peace. And that helps you to enjoy other blessings more fully than you could before. So in the Lakota way, it's all about blessing. As long as you learn from your difficulty and you make the best of it, it will take you to blessing. So there is no good versus evil in the Lakota way. So today, the way you can test an Indian if you want to know if he's dualistic or not, ask him the question, what does smudging mean? Smudging is when you burn sage and you push the smoke over your body. If he says it's to cleanse you and purify you so that all bad thoughts leave you and that nothing evil comes in this area, he's dualistic because that's based on good versus evil. That's not what smudging means. Smudging means to neutralize an area and to calm down so that you can get into a spiritual way just before you enter a ceremony or pray or meditate or something like that. But it has nothing to do with good versus evil. So that's the original reason. So you see how Indians today have become dualistic because of what happened on the reservation in the early 1900s and late 1800s. And so today's Indians are mostly Christian too, or they're Christian influence. Just look on Facebook in any Indian group, you're going to see Indians saying, May the Creator bless you. May Tungashila bless you. This is the Christian way of talking. And it's all pointing to a one God concept. Tungashila is a grandfatherly entity, but there's a whole bunch of them. There's not just one. So the plural is Tungashilapi. There's a bunch of them. And there's grandmothers too. It's not just Tungashila. There's also these grandmother beings too. So that when people just say Tungashila, that shows you the Christianization of our way, only focusing on the male. But in the ancient way, there's equal focus on the grandmother way too. So today, you only hear Uchimaka, Grandmother Earth. Actually, there's more than that. There's a bunch of grandmothers. But today, they only focus on this one. So it shows you that today's Indians, even when they think they're being traditional, they're only grasping a tiny remnant of a much, much, much bigger ancient way. So when I talk about that much, much, much bigger ancient way, most Lakota people disagree with me. And that's okay. I'm concerned about the life that we can create on this earth by how we live it. So I talk about the ancient way. I don't talk about today's Lakota way because today's Lakota way is really a perverted, tainted Christian way. It's all it is. So I talk about the ancient way, what used to exist when Wakantanka met an organization and that there was more than one Wakantanka. There's no heaven, there's no hell, there's no happy hunting ground. This happy hunting ground idea is a Christian idea. There's nothing like that in the Lakota Star knowledge. Our way speaks of a reincarnation, but that's not important. What's important is how you live your life right now, because the present moment is the most important moment, which means that this lifetime is the most important one too. So pay attention. Live your life as best as you can now. Take care of yourself as best as you can. Communicate in a way that's clear, but also learn how to receive communication when people are talking to you, listen to them actively. 
That means don't form a response while they're talking. Because when you do, you're not listening. So things like that. That's all coming from the ancient way. Okay. Now, in Lakota star knowledge, we have stories that talk about the creation of the universe. When we talk about a certain entity or organism, it is considered a being. Like when our stories talk about the Wakatanka. You heard me talk about how a lot of Lakota people today think this means God because of that Christian brainwashing experience that I talked about earlier. A lot of things got changed from the priests. An analogy that I like to use is imagine a house, and this house represents the Lakota star knowledge. So what happens is that somebody who represents the church goes in the house, just takes out a small piece, maybe it's a floor tile, and then burns the house down. Now with this one floor tile, he paints Christian or Catholic images over it. and then. He says, this is the Lakota way. So you heard me talk about how we became weak-minded at the beginning of the 1900s and how we really stopped thinking like our ancestors did. And now our vision has been limited because we are becoming dualistic during that time period. So in this process, it's like, What the churches did is by burning down the house and only keeping this one floor tile, it's like what this floor tile is, is a remnant of a much bigger and wider knowledge and understanding. But still, this floor tile is tainted. It's dualistic. That's what the Christian and Catholic paintings are on this floor tile. They have made this dualistic. And this is what Indians believe today as the Indian way or the Lakota way. And so in that process, words got redefined, like Wakantanka. You heard me talk about how Lakota Star Knowledge says there's several organizations, meaning they're groups of sacred beings, And each organization is called Wakantanka. They have the same purpose, but they just go about it in a different way. That's why there's different ones. So there are several groups that have this name, Wakantanka. But in this process, in the early days of the reservation, where we became weak-minded, for the reasons that I already mentioned, that what the priests did, Like I said, burning down this house and keeping one floor tile and then painting that floor tile with Christian or Catholic designs and saying this is the Lakota way. In that process, they changed the definition of Wakantanka to mean the Christian God, the Catholic God, the biblical God. So this is why if you go on a reservation today, most people are going to tell you that Wakantanka is God. And it's always going to be a one God concept. In Lakota Star Knowledge, this is false. Like I said, in Lakota Star Knowledge, it says there's several organizations that have the same name. And that's why I said most Lakota people of today will disagree with me because of this dualization process that happened in the early days of the reservation. There's just a few of us that know these stories. That's why I have this show. So it will not disappear as long as there's an internet. So in these stories, there's meetings of the earth, the moon, the sun, the wind, the water, the blue that you see in the sky, and other beings too. They're all considered beings in these stories. And this is what's really hard for people who don't understand this way of thinking. Even Indians of today have a hard time dealing with this or understanding this. But you see the earth as an entity. It's a being. 
and she is female. Some of these have genders. Some of them don't. One has both genders. This is really an interesting concept. So do you see, these ideas do not fit the Bible. So that's why the priests had to burn this symbolic house that I was explaining earlier. That's why they had to burn it down, because it conflicts with the Bible. And in these teachings, everything is seen as an entity. The galaxy is an entity. The galaxies are part of a bigger entity. Do you see how this is building up like that? And there are similarities. There's patterns that they follow. But this pattern is written inside each member of creation. So to understand the universe out there requires understanding the universe inside of you. That's how this statement is born. Can you kind of figure out where I'm going with this? Because I'm not going to spell it out. You have to be smart. <laughs> Only smart people listen to this show, so if you haven't figured it out by now, you're not smart. Hey. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I didn't give you enough information yet, but some of you might have already figured it out. So this is what Lakota Star Knowledge talks about in these patterns, these designs. No, I'm not talking about a figure or anything. No, 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 that's not what I mean. Okay, that's not what I mean. When I say signs, I'm not talking about crop circles and that kind of thing. No, 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 no. Or tattoos or anything like that. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. So, when you are sick physically, you go to the doctor and the doctor examines you and takes your vitals and so forth and they're trying to find out what could be causing this ailment and then they narrow it down until they are able to give you diagnosis of what they think is causing the problem. What did they do? They went inside of you. They did things to get information from inside of you. They went within. See, that's following that concept. Reality begins within. That means if there's a problem, you go within to find out what is causing that problem. So, if a guy goes to the hospital and says, Boy, Doc, I have a problem. And then the doc says, well, What's the deal here? Well, every time I eat something, it tastes like carrots. I eat meat, it tastes like carrots. I eat an apple, it tastes like carrots. I, I, I don't know what's going on here. Because I don't like carrots, he says. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the doctor will pull out a book and go, hmm, doesn't like carrots. Let's see, what could that be? Hmm. <laughs> then he tells the patient, I'll be right back. So he goes across the street. Maybe across the street from the clinic, there's a construction crew out there. And they're building a big, big, big skyscraper. So he says, yeah, I need to talk to your boss. Okay. So they get the boss. The boss comes down and says, yeah, I got a guy in there. He don't like carrots, but everything he eats tastes like carrots. What do you think the problem is? So the boss looks up to the top of the building and he says, I don't know. but..." When I look at the top of that building, it makes me think that maybe you should have him eat some flies, and that should cure him. So the doctor says, oh, that's a good idea. So he goes back to this clinic across the street, and he tells his patient, you should eat some flies, then everything will come back to normal. <laughs> Do you see how ridiculous that is? That's what we're doing when we're looking at this light in the sky and saying, what the heck is that? <laughs> we have to recreate the situation here. Then we'll get a better idea of what's going on. 
Now can you take it further? Can you take that thought further? And that's how you can figure out what that light is. It's not a UFO. It's not an ancient alien civilization that built a mega structure. It's not any of that. It's something else. I told you a major, major clue here. Guess where it is in the sentence that I said. That's all I'm going to say. If you haven't figured it out by now, listen to the show again. This is the kind of information that's in Lakota Star Knowledge. You have to know the universe inside of you before you can understand what's out there. Otherwise, you're going to be saying all kinds of crazy things. So I gave you a lot of clues here. And then it's up to you. What do you come up with? That's how this works. When you get the answer, then you're like, how could I have missed that? That's how these understandings are. They're so obvious. But because of our linear thinking, we overlook key important information. That's why Lakota thought is non-linear. It doesn't just go in one direction. It goes in several directions. And when you can comprehend that, you can begin to comprehend how the universe works. That's the whole key there. I thank you very much for taking time to tune in and listen because I do really appreciate it and I do really enjoy talking about these kind of things with you. And mainly, my hope is that you think about it. Nothing more. I'm not asking you to accept what I say. I'm not asking you to believe what I say. But what I am stating is that what I present is based on Lakota Star Knowledge. And as I said, we are a non-linear thinking group. So for us, the concept of goodbye does not make sense because goodbye is linear and our way is non-linear. So we say until next time, which is Toksha Ake. To learn more about Lakota spirituality, I have written a book called Wichocha Otehige. This book also includes Lakota star knowledge information. All the videos that I make, which are about Lakota spirituality, Lakota star knowledge, and cultural information, are based on this book. This book costs 99 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. And to learn more about Lakota language, I have written a Lakota language book called Chante et Owoglake, Speaking from the Heart. And all my Lakota language videos are based on this book. This book costs 119 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. I also teach online and I give spiritual consultations as well. If you are interested in any of my services and products, you can send payment via PayPal to my email address, which is hechaka7 at yahoo.com. That's H-E-H-A-K-A, the number 7, at yahoo.com. When you send your payment, please include your shipping address and your email address. Ho, oh, Lila Pilamaelo. Thank you very much.
ach biata hetan wahi namakha okhlate hetan wahi malak khota cha ohini wanik telo ho hetu welo